and welcome back to Guides for Brides, the wedding podcast. Today we're talking all about sustainability in the wedding industry and for the many couples and businesses out there it's becoming a more and a more important topic for you to consider whether you're running your business or whether you are planning your wedding. And so today I am joined by the fabulous Michelle from the Sustainable Wedding Alliance who's going to talk to us all about the ways that you can make your wedding more eco-friendly. So Michelle, before we get started on the conversation, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I am Michelle Miles. I'm the founder of the Sustainable Wedding Alliance. I have, um, well, the Alliance was formed in 2020 um, during the pandemic. It's something that I've been wanting to do for some time, but haven't had mm-hmm. the bandwidth to be able to do it. So using a bit of a silver lining on COVID, uh, took the time to set it up. The Alliance is essentially in two parts. So we uh, help couples that are wanting to plan a more sustainable wedding by connecting them and giving them inspiration and hints and tips about what they can do. And then we also work really closely with businesses Mm -hmm. to look at how they run their business and how they can be more sustainable in every aspect of their business and how they run weddings as well. Amazing. So this was something that was, you said, a silver lining. How did that idea come about? And I know it was prior to COVID. How did the idea of it come about? So for a long time, I had been working as a wedding planner. Um, So when I say a long time, I'm talking about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Um, And during that time, I've also worked as a consultant for uh, many venues and suppliers as well. And in the last eight years, um, after I had my daughter, um, I really struggled going back into an industry that I saw as quite unsustainable Mm -hmm. and quite wasteful Um, and to kind of reconcile myself with that I started doing more consultancy helping businesses look at the sustainable aspect of it Mm -hmm. and also switched to starting to work with couples that wanted a more sustainable wedding so it kind of started around eight years ago gradually um, and then I found that more and more businesses in particular were wanting to look at the way they were doing things in particular venues Mm -hmm. that were you know really struggling with waste with energy usage and trying to streamline the processes Um, and so that got more and more um, uh, increased over time Um, and I found that actually I really enjoyed doing that for businesses and I could see the benefit to them but also see the benefit to the couples that were coming and having their wedding there Um, and so I wanted to do more of that and so at the beginning of Covid I worked with a few uh, businesses that I had previously been worked um, working with free of charge because actually for them although it was a really awful and difficult time for everybody they did have a little bit of downtime Mm -hmm. in which they were able to actually spend time in their business which you know it's not normal exactly in in terms of like a wedding season especially now it's not something you normally do and so actually they were able to start making changes and I started to see that actually the type of wedding business you were Um, you were all kind of following the similar process Mm -hmm. and actually what everybody struggled with was not having a community not having a soundboard somebody to you know bounce ideas off and you know constantly you had venues doing the same things but kind of trying to reinvent the wheel on how they do a waste audit how they change their energy supply and actually the idea behind forming the alliance and the membership is so that they then have a community and they then have colleagues that they can talk to and share best practice and work together to solve some of the problems rather than always feeling like they're on their own. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, isn't it? Because you can think of doing something and you're like, oh, is this a good idea? Is it not? And I think there will be couples out there and we're going to get on to the couple discussion yeah. in a second. <laughs> but there will be couples out there that are thinking to themselves, you know, we want to do something one, is it possible? And two, what do we do? Yeah. Um, and actually having that sort of your your venue and your suppliers leading the way in that can be so, so helpful. Yeah. Um, so let's get into our into our discussion. So I think you'll agree, the best piece of advice we can give to couples is to do their research. Now, when it comes to research about sustainability, sustainable brands, eco-friendly brands for your wedding, how would you go about doing that? Where do you start? So I think it really starts at the very beginning of your planning. And for people that are just starting planning, I think it's really helpful to take time and consider, Mm -hmm. as you say, choosing a venue that has sustainable credentials is going to make your sustainable wedding planning much easier because they're going to be able to help you lead that way. 
um, you know, looking at directories, looking for the very clear messaging that um, venues are putting out, that caterers are putting out, florists, you know, asking them the right questions and uh, working out what's important to you. Mm-hmm. So a sustainable wedding might look different for different people. Um, and because there are so many different types of venues and different uh, styles of wedding, yeah. it's trying to work out and actually how sustainable can your wedding be yeah. and what it is in, within sustainability that really connects with you. Yeah. So a lot of people uh, will connect immediately to the environmental side of things, the eco-friendly mm-hmm. elements of it. And so trying to find a venue that is, you know, um, has uh, some way of giving back, so looks after the biodiversity, but also ensures they're managing their waste and their energy is really important to be able to achieve that. Um, talking to um, couple, uh, talking to florists that are only using UK grown mm-hmm. or are very aware and conscious of the supplies they're using if they're flying in is another way of doing that. So I think definitely working out what's important to you in terms of sustainability for your wedding um, and how that fits into the style and your your vision for your wedding um, and then doing your research and start asking the questions is mm-hmm. is really really key and you mentioned as well there that there's more to sustainability than just eco-friendly can you break that down a little bit yeah absolutely so um there are three pillars of sustainability um, so there's the environmental aspect, um, there is the social aspect, and there's the economic aspect. So um, day to day, as general consumers, we we tend to look at the environmental mm-hmm. side of things. It's something we can connect with. Uh, there is lots of mainstream media about it. There is Blue Planet, Green mm-hmm. Planet. There's a lot of talk about how we protect our world and the environment. And that is a really, really big part of sustainability. But also we need to think about the social aspect. So are the venue that we're working with and the caterers we're working with, are they are they paying a living wage? Are they treating their staff fairly? Are they ensuring that they're caring for their staff and giving the staff the time they need during a really crazy wedding season? Are they getting downtime? Because otherwise they'll burn out. Mm -hmm. So it's thinking about your team and the wider community. How do they how are they inclusive in your wider community? How do they treat the suppliers around them? Are they giving back to charity? What are they doing in terms of a community aspect? And then from an economic standpoint, are they taking all the profits for the owners and the shareholders? Or are they reinvesting in their business? Are they reinvesting in their staff, in training, in their surroundings and giving back to clients, investing in, in charity projects? So that's, there is more to sustainability. Um, so yes, yeah, so those three pillars are kind of the globally recognised aspects of sustainability. But the mainstream will always focus on environmental because actually it's something we can all connect with. Brilliant. Um, that was a really great explanation. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like completely blown away. I was like, wow, she just rattled that off. <laughs> Amazing. I talk about this stuff a lot. <laughs> it's now become like 100% my passion. So yeah. Oh, you can really, really tell. So can uh, planning a more sustainable wedding take more time than the sort of average wedding planning process? I think um, it certainly can take more time. I think it's about conscious choices. So planning a sustainable wedding is about being very conscious of what you're you're choosing to have at your wedding. And that, you know, that can be from the very early days of planning, or it could be you're getting married next week and actually you want to be more sustainable and you can start making different choices in order to to make that happen. And so although uh, the wedding planning process, I would say, I don't know if you would agree, seems to have shortened. Yeah, slightly, slightly, I would say, because there's there's a bit of a, well, I think there's two completely, yeah, yeah, there's two complete opposite ways that you can plan it really quickly and just get on with it and get wed. Or there is the, nope, we want to have the big wedding that we've always dreamt of so we're going to plan two three years in advance exactly and then there's also the financial element of it you know if you're having a much larger wedding a much bigger party then it might be that you need to plan over 18 months two years to be able to save to do Mm -hmm. that but for I think regardless of how long you have to plan your wedding as long as you are making considered choices all the way through which you kind of should be doing regardless Mm -hmm. Um, all your all that the sustainability brings into it is a the little bit of extra research, so asking those additional questions. But I tend to find that 
uh, from my sustainable wedding planning days, actually working with one or two key suppliers for a couple to choose a sustainable venue or a caterer or a florist and asking that supplier who would you recommend for this actually they will have a fantastic network of sustainable suppliers that they're working with that is able to recommend them and what I would also say is think about where your venue is and try to stick as local as possible to that Um, and that will minimise the amount of work that you're having to do so if there are only three florists that are using UK grown flowers within 10 15 miles of that then you've narrowed down your search area mm-hmm. you know so you actually you only need to speak to those three and then it, you can start comparing on price and style and the relationship that you have with the suppliers and so i think if you can try and find one key supplier and talk to them and you feel comfortable and trust them then you can trust that they've got the right relationships to be able to recommend to people So I think one thing that might concern couples is the prospect of planning a sustainable or eco-friendly wedding can be quite daunting, can't it? What's your advice there? So what I would say is what I've always said as a planner was very much just break it down to what's important. Mm -hmm. Why are you getting married and why are you inviting those people and what was your wedding vision at the very beginning? Because actually, if you go back to the core of that and you really think about what's important to have at your wedding, then focus on that. You know, if you are finding it really difficult, whether you're planning a sustainable wedding or not, would always advise you to take time out from the planning, put it aside for a week, a weekend even, go and have date night, go and spend time (laughs) with your friends, family, go for a Sunday roast with your parents, take time out of the planning just be together as a couple and then come back to it with fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, try and experience different things. You know, at the moment we are well in the thick of wedding season. You'll be going to lots of other people's weddings. You know, it very much tends to be that you're getting married, your friends or family members are getting married at the same time. See what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, look at it from a different perspective and take time out because looking after yourself, you know, as a sustainable uh, pillar it is all about social and that is about self-care as well. So, you know, it's really important that you don't you don't dislike planning your wedding or get burnout from planning your wedding. You've got to be kind to yourself. It is a very long process for some people and it's very difficult. You know, most people have never planned anything on this kind of scale before. And so it's about being kind to yourself and trying to share the load between, you know, you and your partner, But also, you know, leaning on those suppliers who are your experts, they are going to be able to help you with things, you know, and and going back to what I said earlier about working out what what in terms of sustainability is important to you and you for your wedding. Mm. It might be that actually zero waste is something that you want to do. You want to ensure that no no waste goes to landfill from your wedding. So actually just focusing on that one thing and making sure that is achievable will mean that you are going to have a much more sustainable wedding than if you hadn't considered that. True, very true. I mean, it's it's about, you know, you, you don't have to go full hog Absolutely. into this. You can, you can go, right, what can I actually do? And then yeah. sort of relieve the pressure on yourself a little bit. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of the simple swaps, yeah. anything that you can sort of suggest as maybe a starting point that a couple can go, right, we want to plan a sustainable wedding. Yeah. Where do we start on this sort of the simple yeah. swaps? So there are lots of simple swaps and you will have seen them. They're they're sort of repeated a lot. But the reason they're repeated a lot because they are so simple and Mm. they are things that suppliers are able to hold your hand and help you with. So things like um, looking at your menu and making some conscious choices about what you're having in your menu. Mm. Um, Are you going to have a three course menu? Are you going to have a family style sharing menu? And what within that could you maybe make more sustainable? Mm-hmm. So red meat is extremely carbon intensive. So it takes a lot, um, it emits a lot of carbon into our atmosphere, both from the growing the feed for the animals and the animals themselves, and then the processing of those animals to then get them to a plate. And so actually by thinking about different options and if you uh, really want to have meat on your menu, then that's absolutely fine. You should. If that's your if that's your favourite food, it's your wedding. You should. So, but think about the accompaniments with it, or think about switching just one of your dishes to maybe more of a plant based dish. Do you like cheese? If you don't like cheese, could you could you make one of your dishes a vegan dish? Mm. You know, it's not about everybody having to be forced to eat 
you know, what my husband would call rabbit food, which is ridiculous. <laughs> but it's not about, it's about being really considered. Mm-hmm. It's still having all the things you really want to have, but starting to make little changes. And by doing that one small little change, you would be amazed as to how much, um, in terms of a carbon footprint, you could save. The other things I would say is um, at this time of year, so uh, anywhere from May into September, Mm -hmm. British grown flowers are absolutely fantastic. They're beautiful. In the last three years, we have seen so many new flower farms popping up all over the country. Um, And I know in Oxfordshire alone, there is at least 10 flower farms. And so even if you just take that one county, there is enough flowers to go around yeah and the connections that they have with each other across the country there will be specialist growers of tulips of roses of peonies and so actually they have an internal system where they all work together to be able to provide one wedding with a mixture of flowers even if they don't have it themselves on their farm also a lot of flower farms will grow specifically so for those longer planned weddings those 18 month lead time weddings you can actually work with your florist or directly with a flower farm to grow your color in your flower that makes it even more personal doesn't it absolutely and lots of flower farms offer at the brides brides grooms brides brides grooms grooms all to come up and have a look at it so you can actually walk around you can see the fields where everything's grown you can meet the grower and by doing that, it's a simple spot, but you're also adding to your experience. Yeah. And then at the end of it, we really encourage uh, as many people to obviously take flowers home, so reducing the wastage, people can continue to enjoy the flowers. And the other swap is if you aren't a massive flower fan, but you want to have some, you want to bring nature into your wedding, then go for living plants. Like pot Again, plants or, yeah, yeah. Pot plants, ferns, so they don't have to be foliage, they can be flowers as well. I um, saw very recently a wedding that instead of having cut flowers, they had um, uh, meadow boxes filled with growing plants that then went back to um, the florist afterwards, and then she would have used them again at a wedding a couple of weeks or a couple of days later. And so actually the plants live on, and. It means that you're getting the benefit, but lots of other people are getting the benefit, but you also don't have that wastage at the end. Amazing. That is, those are some really fabulous tips in terms of what you can quickly think about doing. Um, I think as well, possibly a key concern, because when I've spoken to couples about this, they're, they're a little bit hesitant on uh, the sustainability side of things because they feel like it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. Do you think that's a, is that true? Is it a myth? What can you tell us about that? It's certainly not a myth, mm-hmm. but it certainly depends on what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So um, I would say that going from a um, flown in Argentine steak <laughs> in your main course to going to a um, locally grown reared Um, chicken or pork um, with seasonal vegetables is going to save you money. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas if you start looking at British grown flowers and you are very specific about your flowers, they can cost more money. But there are ways of going around that. So Mm -hmm. if you have seen on Pinterest, seen on Instagram, these beautiful flowers, you don't quite know what they are and you take them to your florist and you say, this is what I want. Mm really think about what it is that you want from that is it the look is it the style is it the amount of color is it the big flowers or you know the little flower what is it about that picture that you like and and talk to your florist about it because a lot of the time if you're insistent on a flower then if it's not in the UK at that particular point in time, it's going to need to be flown in. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to increase your carbon footprint. If you are very happy to recreate that look and give your florist the trust to provide you with any flowers in that colour palette, in that style, but using British grown, that's going to be more cost effective. Right. So... Unfortunately, the cost of importing flowers has gone up massively since yeah. in the last two years. Brexit, and COVID, since Brexit, all of those everything. Things. And so actually flying in is both unsustainable and not environmentally friendly, but also can cost more if you're being very specific about mm. the flowers. 
Um, you know, also from a supporting UK grown and UK businesses and local businesses, you know, it's really important that we do that because if we don't move towards using them more, they are going to disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it doesn't have to cost more money. You need to be very conscious about your choices. Um, things that uh, it might be that one thing will cost more, but then you can make sure that then other things are costing you less yeah also the things i would say is again go back to what is important to you and your wedding and your wedding vision and think about actually what you need at your wedding yeah um there is a lot of things that are not not really necessary at a (laughs) wedding that we see um that cost money yeah and actually you know what would you rather would you rather everybody have a fantastic time and know in yourself that you've your, your wedding has been as sustainable as it could be um, or <laughs> you've provided somebody with some bubbles on the table or something yeah. like that. So there are definitely ways of reducing your cost from your overall wedding so that you can then spend a little bit more on something that might cost a bit more. Yeah, that kind of goes back to what we said in our budgeting episode where it was prioritising what you are actually wanting for your wedding and where in those top three priorities, you know, that's where you focus your spend and those lower priorities you can sacrifice if if you need to. Absolutely. Brilliant. So we talked about ways that you can make simple swaps to and sort of prioritise the budget. Another way you can do that is by hiring rather than buying, isn't it? So what kind of things can you hire for, just to give people ideas? Oh my gosh, you can hire everything. (laughs) Really, honestly, you can hire everything. So you can hire five foot tall birch trees to be coming to your wedding. So there, there really is options for the majority of things so particularly for um your styling elements Mm -hmm. there is pretty much a hire company um within a good 30 miles of most venues in the uk that you can hire from so um it might be table centers Mm -hmm. um and it might be that you're just hiring a basic table center and then your florist is embellishing it Mm -hmm. um backdrops for ceremonies um you can have everything everything you could ever think of whether it's fresh dried floral wood based they can be hired Mm. um things that you might not think about so um the we were talking earlier i mentioned bubbles Mm. you know it 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 seems to be quite popular at the moment and has been in the past seems to do go in cycles to give your guests bubbles on the tables or at the drinks reception or in a basket at the side and actually what I would say is that's that's a single use plastic item that, mm. you know, is going to end up in landfill and isn't easily recyclable and particularly venues wouldn't necessarily have the facilities to recycle them. But what you could do is hire a bubble machine. Yeah. So yeah, you could okay. have an hour worth of a drinks reception or instead of confetti, have a bubble tunnel. You can hire very cost effectively a bubble machine, bubble liquid, you use it for your wedding and then it's used by somebody else the next day, however many days, and then that product has a life that lives on. Mm-hmm. Whereas and still a the single same effect. Use, exactly the same effect and pretty much the same price. Yeah. You know, a single thing of bubbles if you're going on Amazon, you know, or or buying even second hand the leftovers from somebody else, you know, they're still the the end of their life is basically sits with you and your wedding. So there is absolutely places to hire most things and I think that when you're thinking about all the styling elements for your wedding it is thinking about well can I hire that item and if I can't hire that item and I need to buy it then consider where you're buying it from try and buy it from um, an ethical supplier a sustainable supplier and look into maybe how it's been produced and then think about the end of its life can you make it so that it's not single use? Can you sell it on? On There are some fantastic websites now that exist where you can resell. So whether mm-hmm. it's eBay or Facebook or any of the wedding specific sites, yeah. you can sell these things on. So making sure that it is having an additional life after your wedding um, is really important. So if you can't hire, then try to make sure that it has a life after your wedding. And another tip that we were talking about is sticking to your season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So obviously summer, spring, summer, height of wedding season in most cases. Yep. Um, obviously taking your season into account when you're planning. Yeah. 
there's more flowers available in yeah. the spring and summer. What about autumn and winter? Okay. How, how can couples planning in sort of the colder months yeah. deal with that? So first of all, I would say when you're thinking about, at the very early stages, when you're thinking about your, your wedding and when you're going to get married, pick your favourite season. <laughs> Don't just pick summer because it's summer. Pick your favourite season. If you love cosying up and you love, you know, layers on and sitting by a fire, pick winter. Mm -hmm. Because actually that's, you're going to enjoy your day much more if, if you're able to surround yourself yeah. with the things that make you feel happy. And so pick your season, pick it for you and your, mm -hmm. you, you and your partner, um, and then start thinking about what it is about that season that is special to yeah. you. And then those things are seasonal. So it's much easier for you to go and look for them. So if you absolutely love, like me, the spring, mm -hmm. because everything starts going green and the flowers and the meadows start, you know, popping up everywhere. And I live in the countryside. <laughs> I can't drive out of my village without seeing fields and fields of rapeseed everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, you know, really, really special. And it's, you know, it's spring. So that's where I, that's where I got married. I mm -hmm. got married in that season because I knew I could surround myself with the, the nature that I, I loved and the flowers that I wanted. And also, from a food perspective, I knew that the food that I like and my favourite season food is in spring and it's in abundance, which means that, you know, from a cost perspective, it's, you know, easier to source and also it's much more sustainable. It's easier to source more locally. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about sticking to your season, we mean to sticking to the true British season, mm -hmm. not the wider season. So, you know, for the last, for, for a very long time, <laughs> Uh, florals have uh, kind people assume that roses for example are a spring summer long product mm -hmm. but they're not there's about two weeks in the summer when there is actually good flowers in that season yeah. and so it's really thinking about what it is in the season that you love that you can make sure that you can have at your wedding yeah I think that's really really good advice I mean it's not just about uh, what you like about that is it sort of influences the style, the colours, the, yeah. the as you mentioned, the flowers. Um, all of those things are influenced yeah, by the season. And if and if you um, can't get hold of something within the local area, chances are it's going to need to be imported, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is increasing the carbon footprint of your wedding, the carbon emissions. You know, and it's and it also feels a little unnecessary mm -hmm. because. You know, you are able to get married at any time of year, um, you know, whether it's indoors or outdoors, you know, it's it's something that with some conscious choices made early on, you can absolutely control and make sure that you're able to make the most sustainable choices. And the other thing I would say about seasons is about light mm -hmm. and about sunshine and the light. Oh, look at that. The, the sunshine just oh, yeah. came out as you, as you mentioned. The light. <laughs> And absolutely, you know, we are we are in the middle of, you know, some of the longest days now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in late spring, early summer, you're going to have m longer to be outside. You're going to have much more light until much later. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're really wanting to have an outdoor wedding surrounded by nature, be out, you know, having background music, playing games, you know, then it's the perfect time of year for you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to take longer to get ready in the morning, then, you know, it's the perfect time of year for you because you've got a much longer day. You can get married in the afternoon, in the evening. If you are um, if you absolutely love the colours and the, the light that you get with a golden hour, then go into autumn. You know, it's earlier in the day. You can have an autumn wedding that is still outside in sort of an Indian summer vibe in September. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got this beautiful light, you're outside for the ceremony, you can have your drinks reception, then you can go inside when it starts to drop temperature, cosy up, and you've had all morning getting ready and your guests can mm -hmm. travel. And it's another consideration is if your guests aren't local to where you're getting married and they don't want to necessarily travel the day before and stay overnight, then maybe look at getting married later in the day mm -hmm. and think about the light that's available to you then so that they can travel and then you can spend the evening with them and they can stay or travel back that night. Mm -hmm. So it's really about 
you know, thinking about all the different elements of your wedding um, and feeding that into your favourite season and working out what it affects. And one of the other tips that we were talking about is thinking about the reason that you are choosing things or doing things on your wedding day. Um, Is it because you've seen a trend on Pinterest? Is it because you are inspired by something on Instagram? Or is it because your mum or your nan wants it? Or, you know, what can we advise those couples to do? Because ultimately some things from a sustainability point of view, from an eco-friendly point of view, aren't necessarily needed for the wedding to be a wedding, a celebration. How do you approach that? Especially if it's your mum or your nan that's asking yeah. for it and, you know, you they might not be on the same page with, yeah. with that. Absolutely. And there are, you know, there are lots of traditions mm-hmm. that, you know, older generations may feel as though they need to be part of your day. Or culturally, mm-hmm. you might be bringing together different cultures and there might be different things that they would expect to be part of your day. And I think from a sustainable point or just planning is, mm-hmm. you know, very much you know, having a really honest conversation about, you know, you're getting married, you're bringing together two families, groups of people, and that's really important to you. And then the things around that, you know, we want to feed everyone. We want to make sure everyone's got a drink and having a nice time. (laughs) Yes, everyone needs a drink. (laughs) Exactly. But everything else, is the is the fluff around yeah. it is is the nice things and yeah of course we you know we all want photos to look back on to show our kids our grandkids you know of of what our wedding looked like and for us just to look back and reminisce at and you know it's about trying to have really honest and open conversations you know and hopefully you're able to do that with your family and friends and say you know well this is our wedding and this is what's important to us and you know, we we want to go back to the core mm-hmm. of you know bringing people together and actually some of those things that may be a traditional may be unnecessary to you although important to them if you don't sit down and have that conversation yeah they're, they're not going to they're know. not going to know and then you know. it, it can cause a problem and you know the last thing you want to do you, your wedding planning journey should be absolutely filled with fun and laughter and include the people around you mm-hmm. You know, and if it's causing problems, then, you know, although it might be a difficult conversation to have, it's better than the alternative with either sucking it up and having to do it, (laughs) even though it doesn't sit with you, or having an argument or ignoring it and it causing a problem. I guess that goes to that sort of social pillar as well, doesn't it? Because, you know, that's going to add stress to you, you know, it's going to break down, well, not necessarily break down, really, it might be extreme, but affect relationships. Absolutely. And that's not what you want in a sustainable wedding absolutely and you know on the wedding day you're going to be thinking about if you haven't had the conversation you haven't approached it you're going to be thinking about it on the wedding day you know oh is mum thinking that I should have done it that way and Mm. you know or you're going to be trying heading it off all the time and actually you know it it really shouldn't be that way you should be able to have a conversation you know and and explain to people why you're doing things you know I know that some people would feel that they shouldn't have to explain Mm -hmm. why they're doing things for their wedding you know and sometimes we all have to do things that you know we don't necessarily want to do but for the greater good of your wedding and your own well-being and your partner's well-being it might be the best thing to do and what about couples that are sort of in the midst of planning maybe towards the end of it now thinking oh my God, I haven't even considered sustainability for my wedding. I really want to now. What's your advice to them? Okay, so there are so many things you can do. Again, it is about making conscious choices. So just by watching this, just by having that thought, you've made a conscious choice to change something for your wedding. And so if you can make some of those simple swaps, then great. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they can be very simple. I would say that um, we recently did a campaign called Banning the Unnecessaries. Mm-hmm. So this kind of talks about what we were we were just talking about. You know, there are lots of things that we see at weddings that don't need to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do tend to be things that people panic by. Mm-hmm. I call it the Christmas stocking effect. You know, <laughs> as a parent, you're in the lead up to Christmas in the last few days. You sort of panic for some reason that 
every child hasn't got the same amount in their stocking or they need more mm-hmm. or and you buy things that they don't really need and you're not really sure why you're buying them and I feel like a lot of the times in the in the last lead up to the wedding that that can happen and it is generally the bubbles mm-hmm. um flip-flops um for people's tired aching feet that or to dance in you can't dance in a pair of flip-flops I've seen a lot of signs that say (laughs) for your dancing feet you cannot dance in a pair of flip-flops I challenge you all to dance in a pair of flip-flops it doesn't work it's those things thinking about the end life of those things so just trying to be conscious not to panic by and just by doing that you're having a more sustainable wedding if you were thinking oh actually we might have flip-flops or we might have miniature toiletries in mm-hmm. the toilets. You know, we might provide, you know, extra deodorant and a lipstick or, you know, in the toilets. Do you need to do that? Can you talk to your venue about what they are able to supply? Because mm-hmm. you'll probably find that they already have a selection of things. Or you could actually just put on your last message out to your, cu- uh, out to your guests, bring a pair of flats for dancing in the mm-hmm. evening. You know, don't forget to bring a top up of your perfume if, you know, that's something. So there are, communicating with your guests will mean that you can minimise the unnecessary items that you're necessarily bringing in. And by making those choices, their conscious choices, that will mean that your wedding is more sustainable. So if you aren't able to make the simple swaps and you are very close to your wedding, um, you can still talk to your suppliers. You can still ask them the questions about what they're doing with sustainability your wedding hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. So all the waste element is still in the control of you and your suppliers. Having a conversation with your caterer two weeks out from your wedding to say, can you please make sure that all the food waste goes to a compost rather than to landfill, please? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? You've made a sustainable choice for your wedding. Mm -hmm. Talking to your florist and saying, okay, I know these are the flowers we wanted. I appreciate the orders have probably been put into place, you know, but after the wedding, are you happy to take the flowers back or can we take them and donate them to a charity, to a hospice? Or can you provide us with some brown paper and some twine so that we can wrap them up and give them to gifts for people? Mm -hmm. Again, another sustainable choice because you're avoiding waste. So there is absolutely things that you can do all the way up until your wedding day. And then after your wedding day, there's still things you can do. If, you've all, if you're already married, you got married recently, there are still things you can do. Mm-hmm. So there is a concept of offsetting. So okay. uh, essentially offsetting is when you work out the carbon emissions for something and then you offset those by doing an activity. So okay. the activities will generally be planting trees, which is most common for people, or it could be investing in a carbon capture project Mm -hmm. or it could be um, investing in rewilding so there's a fantastic place up in Scotland that are doing lots of work on rewilding um, some of the massive massive nature reserves there and introducing beavers back into the world and that's a charity and that is absolutely investing in biodiversity and rewilding and that's something you can do that you can be part of Mm. And there is, a, there is a wedding footprint carbon calculator that um, was set up by an Australian company called Less Stuff, More Meaning. And you can go to that calculator, you can put every detail in about your wedding, everything about your dress, everything about your flowers, food, venue, um, including your guests' travel. So you can also do it for destination weddings. And you'll come out with a total at the end of your carbon footprint. And then you can look at that carbon footprint and talk to an offsetting company, of which there are quite a few. (laughs) Um, And specifically, we recommend a a handful of them that work quite closely with us Mm -hmm. and also make it really simple for people to understand because it is a really strange concept and there is a lot of jargon around carbon emissions that makes it really scary. But actually, it really doesn't need to be. You work out what your carbon footprint is and there are tools to do that. You take that to a company and you say, this is our carbon footprint. This is how much we think we want to spend. How much of that can we offset? Or you go to them and you say, right, actually, we want to, we want to have a carbon neutral wedding. We want to have a wedding that is completely offset. And they will work out what that would cost for the different types of offsetting, whether it's planting trees. And you can plant trees in all of your guests' names. You can have a whole forest for your wedding. Wow. 
and you can get involved. There are companies that you can go and get involved in planting the trees yourself. Oh, I mean, that'd be a really cool like one year anniversary. Exactly, now, that's it? exactly what we say. <laughs> it's exactly what we say. Get, get these trees planted, then go visit them on your first anniversary. You know, yeah. you can see your forest. These won't be saplings. They'll be, you know, they'll be growing trees. Mm. And what an amazing legacy to have for you and your guests and another memory Mm -hmm. to add to your wedding day. So it doesn't have to be too late. There's still things you can do even after the wedding day. Amazing. I'm going to get that link from Michelle and put that in the show notes for the um, carbon calculator because I think that'll be really useful for the listeners. Um, I think we've actually covered all of our really key points. Um, I think what I want to mention is eco-anxiety yeah um i think lots of people after listening to this and i really don't want people to feel nervous or anxious about their wedding after listening to this because it is all quite daunting isn't it yeah um eco-anxiety how would you advise people help themselves with with this if they're feeling that way so i think it does go back to uh really thinking about what's important to you in your wedding Mm -hmm. you and your partner taking time out together you know planning the whole process can be really stressful and can cause a lot of anxiety before you even start thinking about sustainability yeah. um you know and, and it's really important that you you go back to the basics you go back to what's important you spend time together and you maybe pick one thing to tackle at a time you yeah. know some people love lists some people find lists overwhelming think about what works for you and use that approach you know, I am a list writer, but I only write the list. I, you know, I might write a to-do list every day, mm-hmm. but I will only write the things that I feel are achievable in that day mm-hmm. so that I can make sure that I'm able to achieve them and cross them all off. Because I don't want to finish my day having seen a massive long list of things that I've still got left to do for the rest of the week. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah, want to be able to, to feel like I've accomplished yeah. things. You know, and that's very much what I'd suggest couples do is, you know, start with one thing and achieve one thing at a time. Yes, have your big overall plan of what you're trying to achieve, but just break it down into really achievable elements, you know. And and if you're starting to feel very anxious about sustainability and, and how your wedding fits into that, you know, just take time out um, and pick pick that one thing, whether it's waste, um, whether it is, you know, switching to local suppliers, you know, find out what's important to you, focus on the one thing and talk to your suppliers, you know, they're there to support you. If they're working sustainably, they will be working with couples that feel exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is a journey that you end up going on with sustainability, you know, and they're there to help you. They're not just there to provide you with a service, they are there to help you through it. And that's what they love to do. You know, customer service is, is such a big part and the social element as, as a sustainable pillar is so important mm-hmm. to sustainable suppliers. So being honest with them and having the conversation about how you're feeling about your wedding and the anxiety that you have around the environment um, and the impact that your wedding may have will mean that they're able to support you and maybe suggest things that they could take off your plate to be able to help you with. You know, a lot of venues, a lot of caterers actually will offset your wedding for you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ask the question, a lot of wedding planners will be able to take a lot of the a lot of the nitty gritty, the searching mm-hmm. out, out of, of the, the equation, equation for you. So I would definitely say if you're quite an anxious person, then you know that the wedding planning process might be a bit more difficult for you. Then it's really important to reach out to people around you. And that might be your suppliers and it might be leaning on them to ask them if, you know, there's things they can help you with. You know, some suppliers, venues, caterers will actually be able to offset for you rather than you having to look into that process yourself. And it might only be that they can offset their element of it. But actually, that's that's better than not at all. You're really taking a chunk away from the full total then, aren't you? Absolutely. And if a lot of your suppliers are able to do that and you're able to do it individually, then it's something that you're not necessarily having to do or think about. And, you know, be really open and honest and and reach out to your family and your friends and your partner, you know, and explain how you're feeling, you know, and really try to lean on those suppliers and your family and friends because that's what they're there for. 
you know, the process of planning a wedding should be really enjoyable. So if you're starting to feel anxious about it, then be open and honest, reach out and find help um, wherever you can. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. And actually, probably a really nice point for us to sort of conclude the episode on. So thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us today and giving some excellent advice (laughs) on all things planning a sustainable wedding. So I hope you listening or watching found it really helpful. And as always, any useful articles and links, especially that link about um, the amount of carbon footprint your wedding is, I'll put all of that in the show notes of this episode. Um, Head over to guidesforbrides.co.uk to start planning your wedding. And don't forget to follow us at Guides for Brides and follow the Sustainable Wedding Alliance on social media too. We'll put the links for them too. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe and comment. Are you doing anything for your wedding that's sustainable that you think will be a great idea for others? Put that in the comments for us. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another episode. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Michelle for joining us today. And have a lovely time wedding planning. Bye.